So, um, I love that question. I love how I can hear them so well. So, the thing is, you don't always hear with your ears and you don't always see with your eyes. Spirit vision is not about looking for anything. Because when you look for something, you will only ever see what you're looking for. And you'll miss all the good stuff. <laughs> hearing, it's not always about hearing with your eyes. Sometimes it's about letting things download or letting things just appear in your mind. Mm -hmm. That's why I say whatever comes through, acknowledge it and accept it. Because the more you acknowledge and accept, the easier it is for our non-physical friends to get information into us. I one time had... Um, a friend of mine was doing a, a drumming ceremony and while I was laying there hearing the drumming I had a life of his that he shared with his current in that life he was married to the same woman he's married to in this life and this was the life he had in ancient Roman times and I'll tell you within 20 seconds this huge chunk of his life I'm talking decades of his life downloaded at once and then after the, the ceremony and after everyone had like talked and hugged and people were leaving, I said to him, one of your past lives showed itself to me. Would you like me to share it with you? And he said, sure. So I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. I'm telling him all about this and that. And he was like, it is crazy how much of what you're saying resonates with details of our life now and with like places I'm fascinated with, like I'm, you know, fascinated, like, they, they owned a grape, uh, a, a grape vineyard. vineyard. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and, um, you know, and he loved vineyard. Like, and they had like this secret passageway through uh, a grape arbor where it looks like it's a solid arbor, but there was actually an escape tunnel through it that his wife and children had to scurry through while he had to fight off Romans and you know, soldiers that were coming on. You know, it was like a crazy situation. And he was able to accept and claim everything. Mm -hmm. But we talked about this for about like a half hour, my telling him the details, the smells, the children, everything. And he said, how long did it take for you to see all of this? I'm like, two minutes, not even less than a minute, because it all downloaded this is one reason why writing is so good. And I encourage all of you, even though you wrote today, when you get home tonight, do some more writing. Have a glass of wine, a cup of herbal tea, whatever, and do some more writing. Or, you know, grab a laptop and audio record. First read what you wrote and then keep speaking. Um, because you'll find even details that did not present themselves to you in the here and now will unfold. And you'll go... That's weird. I did not have that experience in the short journey I did with Bonita, but I remember it as though I had. So allow it to continue to unfold. When you go to sleep at night, you can invite the lives that you are with to reconnect with you and take you back into their lives for more adventure. So you can go back and revisit the lives. You can invite the life to hang out with you elsewhere you can invite those lives or any of those lives to come with you and travel your current day life together. Like imagine, here's what I have coming up tomorrow, or this is what happened last week with their inclusion and their advice, their insight. You know, so work with these past lives. They will be very helpful. The ones that came forward are the ones that feel connected to you in this life. The question is, how and why are they connected? Are they connected because you're helping them, because they're helping you, a little bit of both, because they think they're helping you, but they're really not, because they're helping you from their perspective, from their timeline and their belief systems, you know? Uh, it's, al it's always especially tricky if, like, a deeply religious person is helping you in life. I have two nuns. Yes, you see, now nuns, lovely creatures but ask them what they're doing to your social life 
Are they helping or hindering your social life? One of them seemed to like kind of hide in the darkness, like she was alone. The other one was more outgoing and more mm -hmm. in the light, more forward. Right. Both of them were men. Yeah. It's like a different period. So get to know them. There is a reason why these sacred women feel compelled to be with you in this life. The question is why and who's going to be helping whom in what way. They may also want you to let them know what life is like for women now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sometimes that's really, especially for women, like women who became nuns back in the day, it wasn't always because they wanted to be married to God. It might be because they were gay and uh, they did not want to be burnt at the stake. Or it might be because they were psychic and did not want to be burnt at the stake. <laughs> Being burnt at the stake was a major factor in career choices for women. Right. <laughs> it might be they were the middle daughter of a wealthy family and, unma <laughs> <laughs> and unmarriageable. You know, there are so many reasons other than a desire and maybe they just want people to leave them alone so they can pray, or they have a desire to do good, or they wanted to have an actual career, and that's the only career available. So find out why they became nuns and how that impacted their lives. Did it fulfill them, or was it like, oh, I should have just married the schlub, yeah. you know? So find out. You'll always get an interesting story from a nun, always. Yeah. Was it their choice to join the convent? And one of them looks like she sequesters herself. Yeah. So I could see her in a dark room. like in a But why? Yeah. I mean, sequestering can, like, I'll tell you, as soon as my youngest goes back to college in the fall, I'm going to a silent meditation retreat for two weeks. Mm -hmm. For two weeks, you will not hear a peep out of me unless I am chanting in a room full of people chanting. And I cannot wait. So sequestering is not always a bad thing. Yes. One of my past, or one of my past lives that I kind of get a little scared of is, uh, you know, who Maria or uh, Maria or Teresa is going to be. She was she lived a long time ago. She worked kind of like in the Nazi like area mm -hmm. or like group, but she was a leader of a huge woman like psychic ability thing. Oh, code name Maria. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But she's one of my, she's one of my past lives, and mm -hmm. for some reason I kept getting so drawn to her. And I'd see pictures of her, and she looked exactly like me when I was younger, or like my mom when she was younger. And I was like, this, it's something mm -hmm. is so connecting with her. And I, and I was getting dreams of like her like past life. I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah, and these things happen. Um, like I don't know if anyone here has worked with Joey Adams, but he was he was Rasputin. And like one time I did, uh, he and I were doing an exchange, and it was so interesting because every one of the lives that he was in his past, like this guy has been a powerhouse. Like we went back to way ancient Egypt where he's working with crystals, like ancient to ancient Egypt. He always looks like himself. And some of the people that he was are people that we were able to look up in, and in the images, they look like him. Like people I'd never heard of, but when we Googled them, things came up. We're like, Joey, that one looks like you too. So these things that happen now, if like if you read my book, How Jesus Planned His Life, he talks about in great detail about like being a part of someone or a whole of someone, um, or holding space for someone so you're in there with them. That's why so many people say, I was Cleopatra. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of us were Cleopatra because she needed a lot of souls to be her. Also, whenever you're a life that was like a big life that required a lot of help, when you go in the Akashic Library, which we're about to do, these lives are open books so that you can, anyone can go in. I mean, what am I going to do? Have like a thousand people share their souls with me to have this life? And then when I'm done, no one gets to read the story but me. No, it's going to be an open book. There are also lots of, like, if someone's like, wow, that was a really good life. I'd like to share it. You're like, oh, yeah, I want to read Joe the Farmer's Life in 1803. You know, like, okay, he farmed. He tilled. He farmed, right? <laughs> <laughs> he sheared the sheep. That was a good life. <laughs> but um, you can go and read someone's life and actually live their life as though it's yours. 
And at that point, like your energies are then connected so that you are that person. Mm -hmm. So like, I'm not saying this to in any way, yeah. you what you're saying, but there is so many ways we connect in life. Mm -hmm. um, it's possible that she said, you know what, in a few years when you come to life, you are gonna be doing much of what I did in this life. So I want you to be in my body with me as like a tag along in mm -hmm. here and you are there with her like a lot of us i have the a few tag alongs you were talking about hmm? that that is well it's that that's not quite the splinter it's more like a ride along oh, okay. like when you're with the cops in the ride along <laughs> <laughs> it, it's the same I, I don't know how else to explain it <laughs> but i have a number of ride alongs in this life and they're just like um they've been there my whole life and they're you know sometimes they chat with me a lot of times they feel like they're steering you know, and I'm like, yeah, that, that's cool, too. So there's so many ways that we have lives. And I'm saying this because it's really important when someone says, I know I was this famous person. The first thing most people do is like a pshaw. So it's important to know there were many ways for us to be famous people. And most people who become really famous, like I'm not talking movie star of the year and then gone, like Paris Hilton or Kim Kardashian. No, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about like people who make a difference on the planet. Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, you know, people like that, they're never going to be just one person. They're always going to be a conglomerate in many factors and forms. All right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we're, uh, does anyone have any questions about your experience in the past lives? Mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that I, I tend to be more kinesthetic than visual, and I mean, I am sometimes visual, but more um, kinesthetic and, and other things like that, so I guess I'm just mm -hmm. curious. That's an yeah. excellent question. Yeah. So the prompts are for two purposes. One is to hold the energetic grid that's keeping everyone afloat in space, so that no one's like, well, okay, Benita said I'm supposed to be in my past life, but I'm just here in the room wondering what the heck. So it's to help <laughs> keep people moving along. And it's also to, like, to help, like, if, if you all come out of it and I say, so, were you a man or a woman? I forgot to check, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like, it, it helps, like, remind people things to be aware of. But if they're not useful for you, just glide on the energy and have your experience. I'm providing the generic, you're living the specific. Mm -hmm. And your specific will always trump my generic. Mm -hmm. So that's an excellent question. And honestly, sometimes you go on a past life regression and the next thing you know, you're on a whole other journey. Mm -hmm. But it's an important, like you can tell, like, should you be here now? Can you come back later? Oh, no, you're more important. Okay, then let's go. Like, you can tell. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so long as you are like having the experience that's relevant for you, yeah. then that's the important thing. Yeah. That's what I feel too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Just Always like trust and faith in self. If you need to cry into the eye mask, you can. They are washed a lot. <laughs> um, so don't feel like you gotta take it off. Just you know, go with your trust, your experience, which you might as well always <laughs> wow. I will wash for them and the wash for the free. I never <laughs> thought about that. <laughs> I didn't either until I saw Magda. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I saw her move the mask, and I was like, oh. Yeah. Uh, no, totally go for it. You know, yeah. snot in them, whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> the washing machine is a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorites. And, you know, it's <laughs> water. <laughs> so. yeah, that's so interesting. Yes, let yourself cry. If you're crying, let it cry. Sometimes it's about just you're resonating with mm -hmm. truth, and truth is beautiful. And, you know, sometimes we all cry. Like, when I do past life readings, like, how many people here have done sessions with me? Yeah. So you guys know, like, I'll say one thing, and the next thing you know, you're bursting with tears. 
And me too. I'll be like connecting with my guides and suddenly I don't even know why it just triggered something and I'm sobbing. Part of it is releasing an old something that needs to be released. Anything trapped to energy of any form might be from this life, might be from a past life. Part of it can be just like, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I understand that, yeah. do, do people that have this tend to cry more? I, I tend to always cry over the simplest little thing. So you're releasing does. a lot. Because my father used to always say to me, don't cry, don't cry, don't let you cry. I said, don't. Because he knew I would just burst out in tears over any little thing. Oh my God. No, like I used to work for this one company. I'd be in the corporate meetings and I was designing a whole new program for them that did end up setting international precedents. So I won't get into the details, but just know I'm a genius. I'm a visionary. <laughs> now, I mean, that that's not a boast. That's I love it. In this one small category, I'm a genius and a visionary, but I was dealing with corporate. So you're like, wah, wah. and I had to prove to them that the program I created out of my head would change everything. And they're like, well, can you show us another spreadsheet? Can you? Well, I don't know. How can we replicate this? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> well, what about fiscal value? Blah, 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 blah. And, um, but because in this one small aspect of existence, I am a genius, I would be able to do it. But I get so frustrated. I would be like crying. Like, we don't know if we want such an emotional woman here. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh. And I would say to them, ignore the tears. They're like, do you want to take a moment and compose yourself? I'm like, no, ignore the tears. The tears are going to happen because I'm a little frustrated and I am trying to explain something to you. So ignore the tears and just listen to my words and pay attention to the spreadsheets. The numbers don't lie. And they're like, well, you're kind of emotional. I'm like, and you're kind of stupid. <laughs> like, well, I feel very passionately about bringing you a better, more efficient, more effective product for less expense and happier employees and a happier clients. I feel passionately about that. So that's a good thing. Ignore the tears. Pay attention to the spreadsheets. <laughs> so, you know, tears happen. And anyone who, like, tries to cram the tears down into their core, they're just lying to themselves. And we're all truthful people. So honor your tears. Honor your way of being. And if anyone doesn't like it, that's their issue. They're on their life path, you know? Yeah. Okay, so our next our next thing is to go into the Akashic Library. This is like my favorite place in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> you need a library card. <laughs> you got it automatically. It's okay. your soul. <laughs> so a few things a few things about the Akashic Library. Uh, like any library, there are a few rules and regulations. The first one is, if you try to read a book that you do not have permission to read, they will smack it out of your hands. So only read the books you have permission to read. The books you have permission to read are books that you can energetically resonate with. So you can read your book of your past life. However, if you try to read a chapter that's not open for you, it will not open. Because there may be some lives that do not, they're not relevant for what you're doing in this life, or it would not be good for you to read it. Like, I was Jack the Ripper? Hey! <laughs> but I'm here for divine love. Then, then why did you open the Jack the Ripper chapter? You know? So, um, if there's anything that you're blocked from doing, don't be like overly tenacious. Be like, that's the only thing I want. <laughs> Go with where the energy flow takes you. Curiosity killed the cat. There you go. There you go. That's why cats need the nine lives. Right? Um, so when I, um, I've been going into the library, oh, hold on, literally my whole life. Uh, my brother and sister and I used to go in together when we were kids. And we also used to dream together when we were kids. Um, there are, like I said, open books that one can read, but for today's practice, we're going to go in and um, 
we're going to each read our own life book, okay? I'm going to take us on the traditional spirit journey to get to the library, which is similar to the one we had on the mountain, except we're going to start out in the garden, and then go to the meadow, and then go to the woods, and then down a cliff um, to a, a path that takes us to a body of water, and next to the body of the water, we'll see a cottage in the back and a bench. Sitting on the bench will be someone who you knew in life, who has passed, who loves you very dearly. Yes. All right. So anyone wants to cry now, it's okay. It's okay. The person who greets you might not be the person that you're like initially expecting. So be receptive to whomever comes forward. But if there's someone you really want to see, you can like invite them to be there as well. Just but whoever is there, please be gracious. Don't be like, you're not my grandfather. Get out of here, Aunt Rose. <laughs> you know, I, be gracious. Um, and then they will direct you to some stairs that are going up in the sky. So you'll go up the stairs. And you'll go up the first few stairs, immediately you'll be above the clouds. And at the tenth step, um, or at whatever steps they, they take us on, there will be a platform. And you get off at that platform, and there will be a bench, and a member of your soul family will be there. Or one of your spirit guides. Someone of your soul family, animal spirit guides, spirit guides, past lives, one of them will be there. And they, they'll chat with you. And then you'll go back on the steps and you go up to the next level, which will be like off in space somewhere. And your an angel will be there. So you chat with the angel. No, wait, wait. It will be a, a light being, like a Palladian or someone, some sort of light being, some sort of being of light. Might be an angel, might be any light being. And they'll chat with you. And then you'll go up a little higher. There'll be an angel there to chat with you. And then you go up a little higher, there will be ascended masters or a divine being waiting for you. It might be God, Gaia, might be an ascended master, a demigod, or any kind of god. Someone who's a very, very, Buddha, Muhammad, who knows. And then you get up and you go up the stairs to the library. We'll be outside the library. Sometimes when we go to the library, someone cannot get in. They can get to the outside of the library, but the doors won't open for them. If that happens, explore the outside. That's where your frequency was able to take you. Explore the outside and invite whomever wants to come forward, be it past lives or guides or guardians to come and join you, all right? You might even have a picnic. Invite them to like hang out with you on it. I love, I love having divine picnics. <laughs> so if you get stopped at any level, even if it's on the steps going up, or if it's at the body of water, feel welcome to stay there and enjoy everything from there. All right, don't try to force it where your energy isn't going. Um, because really, I mean, you can meet with your past life just sitting here now with us fully eyes open. If you're with someone who loves you by a body of water, you can invite your past lives to come there. You might even go into the little cottage and have a luncheon together. Am I food obsessed? Yes. <laughs> um, but we will go into the library when you are in the library the traditional way for it to look is like an old tiny ancient library some people will see it with like the bookshelves go forever when you look up it goes up forever uh, you might even see clouds and stars instead of a roof uh, there will be big tables or big comfy chairs. Sometimes you see the library and it's like the inside of a circular building, like it's inside a tree and the furniture is all natural with like flaccata carpets on, fuzzy carpets on the ground. So if you go in and it does not look like the traditional library, whatever it presents itself as is the way. Sometimes you'll go in and it's like an ancient Greek temple Instead of books, orbs float down into your hand. So anytime I say pull out a book, if it's an orb, or sometimes I'll go into the Akashic Library and it's like a Willy Wonka candy store, 
and I'll go in and there's like the old timey guy behind the candy counter and he's like, ah, I got some licorice whips in for you. Reach your hand in and I'll lift the lid off a glass jar and that's my book. When I look inside the glass jar, I get pulled into a past life. So understand when I say book, it might be a toy, a licorice whip, an orb, an actual book. It might be a newspaper. It might be a television. However the book presents itself is your book. Now, so you may have a guardian or a librarian there in physical form who will go and get the book for you, or it may be the book will float out to you, or it may be you know which book to get and you pull it off the shelf. Um, I will tell you to pull it off the shelf, but if someone's retrieving it for you, or if it's floating to you, then that's you're pulling it off. Or again, if it's a choo-choo train or whatever. Um, you will sit down, I'll say sit down at one of the great tables, but if you're sitting in a padded chair next to a fire, then that's your great table or whatever, you know. And you'll look at the book just as we looked at the doors in the last uh, meditation. You'll examine the book. The book will look different on the outside for each life. Sometimes it will be big and bound in leather. Other times it will be a scroll. It might be a faux doors travel guide, you know, that you would stick in your pocket. It will look different for each life. So you will examine the book, you'll feel it. You'll open the book and allow it to fall to whichever page it wishes to fall in. Or if you turn the page, let it work with the book on where it goes to. Start reading and you basically let yourself dive into the book. And then we go through a similar journey like we had before. Some people, when they're in the Akashic Library, they don't go into the life, they read it. They might read in a book or in a newspaper. I know one lady, she reads all the past lives as though she's reading an obituary in the newspaper. Uh, some people have it told to them. The person whose life you're reading will come out of the book and sit with you and say, let me tell you about my life. This was a great life. I was Joe the farmer. Uh, like, and sometimes they'll say to you, my life is the most fascinating life ever. And you're waiting for the fascination and realize, oh, it was fascinating for them, not fascinating for me. So, you know, accept whatever is given to you. Um, we'll do two past lives two readings, three if we have enough time. We'll see how the energy is holding. And then we'll come back, have a very short break for everyone to scribble. I'm talking like 10 minutes. And then we'll immediately go back into the library so I can take you on a little guided tour. And um, when we go back into the library, we're going to ask our eternal guardians, like guardian angel or dragon or whomever is of your eternal tribe, soul family, to come and join us so that you'll have a chance to meet some of your posse as we are touring. So when we do the second one and we're going through and I take us to different rooms, if you get distracted by chatting with your friends, that's okay. All right. Um, if anyone needs to use the restroom, go ahead. Yes, and get settled. Um, if you are someone who snored a lot last time, be sure to sit up. And if you are someone who was spacing out last time, sit up. <laughs> and if you want an extra pillow to like hold in your lap so that you can like cuddle something. Uh, yeah, we have plenty of pillows. I bought five and below out.